This is Ringler Radio, where you get all the latest news and information about settlement solutions, litigation, mediation, and structured financial security from Ringler, the largest and most experienced company of settlement consultants in the United States. Ringler has been helping injured people and their families since 1975. Ringler Radio is made possible in part by American General, Liberty Mutual, MetLife, Mutual of Omaha, New York Life, Pacific Life, and Prudential. Now join Ringler Radio host Larry Cohen. Well, hello and welcome to Ringler Radio, everyone. I'm Larry Cohen, head of Ringler's Northeast Operations, and we're certainly glad you could join us again today. Well, today we have some good news for Medicaid recipients and the lawyers that serve them. Almost hidden in the Bipartisan Budget Act of 2018, recently signed by President Trump, is a change in the way Medicaid recovers its liens. Essentially, it repeals Medicaid's expanded third-party recovery rights. And with that information, I know you're all now listening a little bit more closely. So joining me in our discussion is my friend and Ringler colleague, Cindy Shanley, who manages Ringler's Louisville, Kentucky, and Southern Indiana offices. She's also a member of Ringler's Board of Directors. She has 30 years' experience in claims, insurance, and structured settlements, planning and expertise, many of the specialties, including our topics today. Cindy, you've got got a lot of experience. I've known you for a long time. Welcome to Ringler Radio. Love to have you here. Thanks, Larry. Appreciate it. Great. Also joining us is a, a special guest who's always welcome here on Ringler Radio, Eric Vaughn, the Executive Director of the National Structured Settlement Trade Association, NASTA. His background includes extensive experience on Capitol Hill, serving on the White House Domestic Policy Council, and leading NASTA, our industry voice, advocating for injured parties involved in structured settlements. So with that, welcome back to Ringler Radio, Eric. Always a pleasure to have you on. Larry, thank you very much. Great to be back with you. Terrific. Well, this is a huge development for injured people currently on Medicaid, who have lawsuit settlements, what this means now is that Medicaid can only seek reimbursement from that portion of the settlement allocated to medical costs. Before now, Medicaid could claim recovery from any of the settlement proceeds. And uh, Cindy, let's put this in some real terms, real world terms. What's the win here for the claimants and for the attorneys? Well, Larry, as you say, this is a really a huge win for Medicaid recipients, especially Um With this legislation, Medicaid can now only recover liens from the medical portion of a settlement, whereas before this bill was signed, they could try to uh, assert liens against any other portion of a settlement like lost wages, any kind of non-economic damages, or any portion of the settlement other than medical. So this is really a huge win for claimants to be able to uh, to be able to recover settlement money that they would not have been able to do in the with the old law. No question. And for example, if a, if a claim settles for a hundred thousand dollars and eighty thousand of it was for pain and suffering, lost wages, and other non medical damages, and if only twenty thousand of it was due to medical damages, Medicaid can now only recover up to the twenty thousand dollars of those medical damages. And Cindy, you've you've had cases like this, I'm sure. Uh, this is a huge, huge difference. Yeah, Larry, this has been a, a hot topic for several years now. And even though the 2013 Bipartisan Budget Act provided that um, uh, provided Medicaid with full recovery rights. Additional legislation actually kept it from being implemented until October of last year. So it's re- the, the old law was actually only on the books for a little while. However, if this law hadn't gone into place, uh, we know and we've already heard and we've read and I'm sure a lot of our audience has as well that Medicaid in all of the states were, were going to start aggressively pursuing its recovery efforts from, the, from people's entire settlement instead of just the medical portion. You know, Eric, this development was somewhat buried in the Budget Act of 2018. What can you tell us about it? How did it actually get in there? Uh, who was responsible for that? And, and, you know, give us a little history on that. Larry, it wasn't, it wasn't buried um, by accident. It was buried on purpose. Um, of the 257 pages, I think it's in the second to last page. This is something, and Cindy described this just perfectly, this is something that's been... Uh, a very important, very hot topic 
um, for trial attorneys, um, for people that advocate for injured uh, victims, for people that are concerned about the people that are uh, are forced to or need to benefit from the Medicaid programs. So what the government has been trying to do, and some on Capitol have been trying to do, is to change the rules, change the regulations to allow the entire settlement to be uh, allowed to be captured by Medicaid um, as, a, as a secondary payer. What this is going to do is exactly as you described it, focus on the medical portion only of the settlement. This is the argument we've been using for three and a half, about four and a half years on Capitol Hill. And when I say we, I mean led by the American Association for Justice, organizations like the National Consumers League, the American Association of People with Disabilities. But I got to tell you, one of the principal reasons we were able to get all this done was a man by the name of Jim Early. Oh, and yeah. I mean this sincerely. We, we know that name, yep. Jim, Jim Early, as member of our board of directors, current president of our board of directors, and he doesn't like to shout out very often, but we talked about this a couple of years ago. What if we could slip this in? What if we could put this into the budget bill? Would you be in favor of it? Of course. Let's try to do it. That's the easy part. The hard part was keeping it quiet because mm-hmm. the reality is the more you talked about this, and in fact, until the president signed it at 2 a.m. on uh, February 9th, nobody wanted to talk about it for fear that somebody would go back in and try to change it. Mm-hmm. But this is a major, major win for people on Medicaid and the attorneys that work with them and people in our industry. So we're really excited about this development. Well, I can understand why. And, you know, this change effectively resets the standard for Medicaid lien recoveries. And that was established by two former Supreme Court rulings. So we actually, this, this actually helps abrogate some of that original Supreme Court rulings, doesn't it? It absolutely does. I mean, now you've, you've got a situation where the courts, uh, the Congress, Medicaid, everybody's been involved in this, but the one constant has been this threat, as Cindy pointed out, that this law was going to kick in and Medicaid was going to be able to go out after the full dollar value of a settlement. People on Medicaid don't have a lot of resources. They were really being hammered. And only two states had started to implement this as of October of last year, but all 50 were going to move in this direction because it's a way that they can capture resources. This brings it back pre of Auburn decision. It gives us a chance to basically make sure we protect those assets for these really desperate, injured, and vulnerable people. And so it's a real testament to the commitment of our in our industry, trial attorneys all across the country, uh, and AAPD and others. So it's a, it's a real group win for a lot of people that really desperately needed this win. No question. And, of course, we don't want to underestimate the uh, effect of the lobbying efforts that you and your great organization have made, too. So that's, that's all part of the process. You know, Cindy, this, this update on Medicaid secondary payer compliance is different from Medicare, which can seek dollar-for-dollar dollar reimbursement up to the entire settlement amount. So there's a difference. We don't want to confuse anybody. This is a Medicaid issue, not a Medicare issue. Isn't that correct? Uh, yes, Larry, that's right. And Medicare does have that uh, right in most cases. It's federal law versus what Medicaid is, which is a state-by-state law. Medicare actually uses a specific formula to figure out how much of a, a lien has to be taken out of a total settlement. And uh, rather, and it, it is off the total settlement rather than just the medical portion of the settlement. And, um, and, and other than that, Medicare is also very concerned about future medicals in a settlement, the compensation that a claimant might get for future medicals, which we've talked about in other radio shows about Medicare set-aside allocations, but that's for another show. Yeah, that sure, uh, sure is, and you're absolutely right. And so it's important for the audience to understand the differences there. Well, let's take a quick break right now, but we'll be right back in a minute right here on Ringo Radio and talk about this uh, change in the Medicaid lien resolution issues. We'll be right back. This is Ringler Radio, brought to you from Ringler, the nation's leading provider of fair settlement solutions. Did you know that Ringler is involved in a third of all structured settlement cases in the country? Ringler advisors work with all the parties in a lawsuit settlement to find the best possible financial solution for the people involved. Everybody wins. 
There's a Ringler consultant in all the major cities of the U.S. No one has more experienced experts in the settlement business than Ringler. Check out our website at www.ringlerassociates.com for the best information for injured parties, attorneys, and claims professionals to find the Ringler advisor nearest you. When it's your interest at stake in a lawsuit settlement, you want only the best, most objective financial plan. You can count on Ringler Advisors to create a customized plan that meets the financial needs of you and your family for the future. Visit ringlerassociates.com to learn more. Well, welcome back to Ringler Radio. Glad you could join us. I'm your host, Larry Cohen, along with my co-host and Ringler colleague, Cindy Chanley, head of operations in Ringler's Louisville and Southern Indiana offices, and, of course, Eric Vaughn, the executive director of NASTA. And we're talking about the change in Medicaid's lean recovery process. Well, Cindy, as we've both seen, the amount which Medicaid can recover in a settlement negotiation can complicate things dramatically. Talk a little bit about that from your experience, how, uh, how that gets in the way oftentimes of, of getting things squared away and settled. Well, for Medicaid, um, it is important that the trial attorneys or the attorneys for the injured party understand that there can be substantial penalties if Medicaid's liens are not satisfied. Uh, The liens have to be taken care of before the injured party can collect any of uh, his or her money. But it's also really important to understand that Medicaid sometimes tries to uh, get higher liens than what is legally allowed by the state laws. Um, So, you really have to look at the medical bills, you know, line by line just to make sure. And with this new law, it may be important to maybe even specifically apportion a settlement to make sure that a settlement agreement spells out how much of the settlements related to medical versus other damages in a settlement, just so, to make sure there is no issue on what Medicaid can recover. Yeah, and I think that's very important if there is Medicaid involved in the specific case you're handling, no question. So this does vary from state to state because uh, Medicaid is a state-by-state uh, program, correct? That's right. While Medicare is consistent in how it collects liens by their formula that we talked about a little while ago, Medicaid is actually administered by each state and kind of kind of the federal government kind of looks out for stuff. But each state has different laws for recovering amounts paid in a settlement. And so uh, people in every state need to understand what those laws are. Well, that's that's absolutely correct. And of course, the bottom line here is if the Medicaid recovery law had not been changed, this would have severely impacted some injury victims that are on Medicaid and, you know, obviously could potentially lose all of their settlement monies in, in simply repaying the lien. And uh, this is really a big help to them. Eric, you have the last word. Uh, this is something, you know, every time you, people look at Washington, they see things coming out they're not happy with. This has got to be something that's going to make the American public, I think, uh, quite satisfied with. You know, you would hope that this is, this is just smart uh, law. And it's, it's actually recognizing uh, the very significant, very real challenges that people on Medicaid and the people that are working with them face every day. Cindy pointed out that when this was first enacted back in, uh, I think, 2013, the Congress quickly stepped in and had laid out extensions. So it has been extended, not implemented, up until just late last year. And in order to stop that very disruptive, disruptive action, Congress came forward, quite honestly, rarely, in a bipartisan fashion, to agree on this. Now, while it's a technical correction or it's a, it's a rollback to previous rules, the reality is members of Congress recognize their role in helping to protect the interests of very seriously injured, seriously uh, disabled, seriously impoverished people. Let's not burden them any further. And it came together and do something that's right, smart, and forward-looking. So we're really pleased with this development. Well, it's it's good news for everyone, and uh, hopefully, you know, we'll have more good news as we move down the road uh, with some other legislative action that I'm sure you're you're very tuned into. So, with that, I'd like to say uh, thanks again for, to both of you. Now, Eric, if someone wanted to contact you, uh, how would they do that? It's so easy. It's nssta.com. Uh, and I used to have a, a little moniker as well, just sort of Vaughn.com. But the reality is we're the National Structured Settlement Industry's voice, eyes, ears, 
And sometimes we think heart here in Washington, D.C., and we need people to really get focused and let us know if there are problems. This is a big one, and this took three years to solve, but we are focused on our industry's future and finding ways to make the laws of our country a little, little more effective, a little more efficient, and a lot more advantageous to people that are working in the structured settlements industry. No question. A lot more responsive to the needs of the people. So with that, also, uh, Cindy, if someone wanted to contact you, how would they do that? Um, well, mine's pretty easy, too. Uh, we have ringlerassociates.com, and uh, they can search for my name, Cindy Chanley, C-H-A-N-L-E-Y, or call me at 502-569-9339. And before we end, I just want to thank Eric and thank NASTA for always supporting us and doing what we what needs to happen to make sure that uh, the injured parties are, are taken care of. Absolutely, and I second that. And of course, a little shout out to uh, Jim Early too, who's obviously yeah. was heavily involved, heavily involved in uh, the Medicaid issue, and uh, is leading NAST at this time, which is which is really great. So, uh, I'd also like to interest all of you out there to contact RinglerAssociates.com, as Cindy mentioned, because you can find all the Ringler Associates on that website. You can also find a lot of information about structured settlements and other uh, legal issues, other important issues to the industry that we're all uh, all involved in. And uh, you can also find all the Ringler Radio shows. You can find Ringler Radio shows on that RinglerAssociates.com website, also RinglerRadio.com, LegalTalkNetwork.com, or on iTunes where you can download uh, to your own, you know, your own enjoyment. You listen to it whenever you want. You can hear Cindy and, uh, and Eric as you walk through the park. So with that, I want to say thanks for listening. And uh, also, uh, Eric and uh, Cindy, thanks again for a great show. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Larry. Terrific. And for the rest of you out there, go have a great day. Bye-bye. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network. Its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer. Thanks for listening to Ringler Radio. Celebrating more than a decade of podcasting and over 2 million listeners. Think of Ringler, the objective settlement advisors with more than 140 consultants in 60 cities nationwide. Visit RinglerAssociates.com today.